So dapat nakaharap po yung ano sa inyo na ito mga projector diyan nakaharap. Mga screen. Kasi hindi ko alam kung may nakaupo sa harapan eh.
check. Test mic, one, two, three. Good morning po sa mga region. Standby po. Hello. Ito sa Region 9, Region 6, Region 10, at Region 1. Yeah, 
Magandang umaga po sa region, si Ray Gaspar po ito ng ISMO. So, sandali na lang po, tapusin lang po nila yung pagsisetup ng uh, kanilang PowerPoint presentation. Sandali lang po, standby po ang regions.
may we have some uh, attendance check before our opening and welcoming. We welcome ko daw kaya sabi ni Darwin. Kaya alamin natin ko sino present na we welcome natin. First to start, we have our honored guest from SDPO, Miss Greta Tarun, together with her mates. Paki introduce yung ati mga kasama, Miss Greta. At ang ating mga kasama mula sa National Capital Region. Please uh, introduce yourselves. And, yes. Okay. Uh -oh. Sa kadahilan ng uh, tayo live streaming, Pakigamit lamang po ang microphone para naririnig na ating mga regional participants. Uh, so, this is a meeting not only of central office, but together with all our regional information officers who are now connected to us in the cloud. Okay? Kaya, pakigamit parati ang microphone o kung tayo magsasalita. Yeah, okay, we'll pull in introduction para makilala kayo ng ating mga regional participants. Like ko pa si Tardel question and answer o presentation pa sila ara. Okay. Silbet Rojas from the NCI. All right. Eleanor Sadyasa from the National Capital Region. Okay. Still from the regions, uh, uh, nagpa-participate sa kasalukuyan na connected na sa atin. Ay mula sa Region 1. Hello! Region 1. Ayun pala si Dani. Hi, Dani. Okay. At mula sa Region 3. Chief Lor. Region 3. Okay. At mula sa Region 6. Ayan si Chris, oh. Hi, Chris. Please wave your hand. Yeah, that's Chris. Okay. Then we have from Region 10. Region 9. Sana. Ayan, ayan. Okay. Okay. Si, si Ma... Manding, si... At yung dalawa pa niya kasama, nakapula. <laughs> hindi masyado malinaw yung inyong figure dito, kaya hindi namin ma-recognize. Si Manding lang medyo malinaw. At mula sa Region 10. Region 10? Nasaan siya? Region 10. Ayan, si Pides. Hi, Pides. Si Edwin, nandiyan din ba? Uh -oh. Sa totoo lang, hindi ka namin naririnig, Pides. Okay. Mula sa Region 11. Present. Uh, narinig niyo yung boses niya? Uh, Nakachat yan. Sa Region 11. Okay. Naririg dami yung boses mo, pero hindi malinaw kung yung figure nyo. Kaya... Si Jun yata yung isa. Si Pedro ba yung isa? Si Jun at si Pedro? Ayan ah. Ayun, kaya pala wala si Edwin kasi ay may kasalukuyang lecture siya. Ayan, na nabasa niyo sa chat. Uh, thanks, Pides, for, for the information. 
Okay, so we have which regions? Uh, 1, 3, 11, 10, 6, and 9. Mamaya, makakonek pa natin yung iba. Okay? Ito ang kagandahan ng modern communication technology. We have our virtual conference together. And uh, we welcome, of course, ang ating taga HRDD na bahagi din ng hero at the same time. Si Miss Marit uh, Christos Tomo. So, ayan, bahagi ng hero. Ngayon, isa-isay natin mula sa, mula sa International Humanitarian Law Division. We start from the OIC head, Ms. Epiphany Garay, and Ms. T.I. Anzano. Oh, tatayo ka para makita na regions. Ayan, ma-recognize. Please stand to be recognized. Okay, Ms. Maria Jean Biernes, uh, evangelista, o oh, nga pala, married na. Okay, you remain single. <laughs> Kasi Tuesday po nga lang, ha? hindi biyernes. Okay. Mr. Dominic Calamba. Mr. Dante Armidilla. Mula naman sa ating education division, we start tayo kay Pope Hubert Ruiz. Okay. Ms. Malu Kudal. There. Mr. Alex Flores, Ms. Joan Badelius, Mr. Raul Kintong, yan, anak niya sa Teneo, mula naman sa ating advocacy division, Ms. Cynthia Orqueza, Miss Jing Ragaza. Okay. Mr. Joy. Mr. Joy Estrada. Oh, kasi palati na papagkamala, Miss. Kaya, kinakabit niya sa kanyang, sa kanyang email yung, yung prefix na Mr. Uh, for, uh, para klaro na Mr. Mr. Hindi pala. Miss Jasmine and the Quig. And the Quig. And the Quig. Hindi, and the Quig. Okay. Uh, Mr. Pastor Mimi Anyasco. Okay. From our centers, the Human Rights Resource Center. OIC, Ms. Sheila Lagi, Mr. June Magbo, and then, behind the camera, sa ating Barangay Human Rights Action Center, National Coordinator, Ms. Vicenta Bebot Rosales, pakita yo. Ah, Basilio nga pala, yan. <laughs> Okay. Kasi nagsimula yung mga dalaga. Ngayon ay may nagmultiply na. Uh, meron na mga interest. From the office of the director, Mr. Asiyang pinakapunong abala dito sa ating feedbacking session, Mr. Edwin Lontok Simpelo. And then Darwin. Sorry, sorry. Ah. <laughs> Uh, Nagle-lecture kayo si Edwin, si Doktor. Okay? Doktor Darwin Simpelo. Yeah, magiging doktor yan eh. Okay? Of course, yours truly, LC of Reneo. Okay? At ang ating mga behind the camera na salamat at nagmutulong sa atin dito sa live streaming. Uh, mula doon sa dulo, si Mr. Roji Dayan. Okay, nakita nyo? Dito sa kabila, si Mr. Jonathan. Ah, Ray pala. 
As I said, na, napapagkamala ko kayong dalawa na interchange. So, Mr. Ray Gaspar, at ito na sa likod ko, Mr. John Liasus. Okay. Kumisa may senior moments tayo. Okay, uh, maganda umaga sa atin lahat, mga kapamilya, kapuso at kapatid sa ating human rights uh, promotion undertaking. Ngayon ay meron tayong sinasagawang sharing session. Ay, dito, mukha kang baby dyan. Tapos dyan, malu. Lu, Lu. Good morning, Lu. Si Lourdes. Okay. Alright. Uh, sige, tuloy natin. Uh, welcome to this uh, live streaming of our sharing about our OPIP and SPMS. Siguro, uh, hindi naman lingit sa inyong ka kaalaman na lubhang bumibilang na ng taon mula na magpauso ang Department of Budget and Management ng kanilang tinatawag na Organizational Performance Indicator Framework. At ito ay nakatugma sa programa o adhika ay ng ating presidente na ang tinatawag niyang Daang Matuwid. Alam din niyo kung bubuksan niyo ang website ng Office of the President, hindi nawawala doon sa unang makikita mo sa ilalim ng kanyang homepage yung kanyang social contract. Meron siyang kontrata sa taong bayan. So, sa kanyang pamumuno dito sa ating bansa. I'm trying to make a difference, he is the only president, I believe, besides uh, Manuel Quezon, who came up with this social contract. At para lamanan yung kanyang mga sinasabi dyan, ang Department of Budget and Management ay nagparisid ng OPIP, uh, acronym ng Organization Performance Indicator Framework. Kung ang Presidente Pinoy ay nagsimula noong 2010, yung pagpaparisid ng OPIP ay sinimula ng 2011. Ang ibig sabihin, Uh, binalangkas ng DBM, nag-homework sila ng 2010 sa tulong ng European Union at, at ng mga expert ng EU at yung kanilang output ni, ni roll out nila kinaskade sa lahat ng ahensya ng gobyerno. Kaya mula 2011, 2012 hanggang sa kasadukuyan, nandun tayo sa process ng rolling out the wagon called OPIP. Okay, yung OPIP. Kaya, itong year na ito, hanggang next year, pwedeng sabihin natin na experimental period tungkol dito sa OPIP. At tayo, in solidarity with the trust of our national leadership, is uh, trying to be very serious and trying to make good of all these initiatives with open mind, with open hearts. With open ears, open eyes, open arms, not necessarily open legs. Okay, so kaya sa discussion na ito, uh, niling ko sa inyo na buksan ang ating isipan, unawain ng lubos at isa puso yung essence nito bakit kailangan merong office para tayo naman ay makatulong dito sa pagpapakintal at gawing realidad yung tinatawag na daang matwin. Magsisimula tayo sa ating sarili. Bago tayo mag-demand sa iba, sa labas ng ating mga sarili, sa labas ng ating opisina, sa ating institutional leadership, sa ating local leadership, national leadership, bago tayo mag-demand, let's start from ourselves. As we ourselves are state stakeholders. Tayo mismo ay bahagi ng Estado, 
wala sa maliit na bahagi hanggang sa pagkabuoan uh, gobyerno nangyayari yung tinatawag na daang matwid. Kaya tayo meron ganito. Magsisimula tayo sa pag-review nung ano na ang meron dito sa atin na opin. Maaari meron tayong mga reaksyon doon sa kung ano na nakalatag. Ating i-share kung ano reaksyon natin. Not for the sake of uh, of uh, destroying uh, what is in place but with the purpose of positively contributing to the enhancement or furtherance of the very purpose of why we have to come up with this so-called OPIP. Okay? Kalin sabay ng OPIP, uh, bakit merong OPIP? Kas kasabay niyan yung ating SPMS. Ano yung SPMS? Strategic Performance Management System. Gusto kong i-connect itong SPMS doon sa many years back, hindi naman, siguro many, a few years back, nagkaroon tayo ng matinding tinatawag na organizational shake-up sa Third Commission. At yan sa Third Commission, halos naubos yung ating panahon sa pagtu, pag-review. Ano ba yung mga processes na ina-undergo natin sa pagsasagawa ng ating programs, projects, and activities? Na ang resulta, yung tinatawag nating systems, human rights education systems, na yung ating mga outputs pinagsama-sama, kinonsolidate, nitinis ng consultant na hinire ng commission for that purpose. Sa UNDP, nabayaran ng consultant ng million million. Ang tatawag nating CPRM. Yung output niyan, pawawalang sa isa iba natin yun. Magkatapos bayaran niya ng million million. Pawawalan sa ito iba natin yung output ng CPRM pagkatapos natin paghirapan na i-produce yung kanilang kinonsolidate. Anong sabi niya? Hindi namin masyado naintindihan. Tutuloy kaya kasi sabihin. Okay? So yung... Kaya may kopya ang bawat division, may tayo sa laman sa SDPO, may tayo ng hard copy. Sana makakuha tayo ng soft copy para mas madaling i-review kung meron sana. Nitong Humorous Education Systems as packaged by CPRM. Ganyan kakapan. So, ilang taon yung process na yan sa CPRM? Ilang taon? Kaya ilang milyon ang napabayad. Ano? At gaya kakapal, yung para sa Human Rights Education and Promotion Alone. Okay? Under the Third Commission, tatlong taon yung, yung consultancy ng CPRM. Under the Second Commission, dalawang taon yata yung consultancy ng CPRM. Total, five years. Ano kaya yun? Kada taon, isang million? I really don't know. We have to find out from maybe COA magkano talaga naging cost nito organizational uh, review and organization planning. So, pagkatapos yan, marami na naman sa kasalukuyan tayong organizational planning na ginagawa. At uh, kasama yung pagbubuo ng CSR Charter. Marami kang pwede tingnan ng mga factors that go with that. Kaalinsabay nitong ating OP, SPMS, ay eh, meron pang ibang parallel developments, parallel tracks na interconnected. Kung ano yung lalabas sa OPIP, sa SPMS, posible i-coconnect dyan doon sa ano yung organization na ikakasasa ating CHR Charter na ipapasok sa Kongreso. So, but the CHR Charter, we leave that uh, for a while. Park na lang muna natin, i-discuss natin some other days. 
Uh, pero focus tayo dito sa ating uh, OPIP saka SPMS. Dinanggit natin yung resulta ng CPRM sa kadahilan ng para mabuo yung SPMS, kailangan tayo magkaroon ng internal retrieval. What we retrieval ang gagawin natin. Yun nga. Dahil konektado sa SPMS, ano yung output natin doon sa CPRM? All the processes that we do are already there. Are we going to reinvent the wheel? Sobrang sobrang binuhos natin ang panahon. Isinaisang tabi natin lahat ng ating mga programs, projects, activities for three years na nandito yung CPRM para i-produce yung mga nire-require ng CPRM. Now, now probably is the time to look back and and see whether or not all these uh, processes that we have identified and, and packaged uh, in that command still apply dito sa ating present situation. Or are we going to add up or are we going to improve on it on the basis of what is being demanded at present by DBM? Why do we have to comply with DBM? It's not only because uh, uh, we want to support uh, the president's uh, thrust uh, na daang matwid, but it's also because uh, ang hold ng CPRM, pag hindi ka sumunod dito, wala kang pondo. Pag hindi mo ginawa yung OPIP, wala kang, wala kang release. Pag ginawa mo at maganda naman ang iyong pagkakagawa, meron kang PBB. Anong PBB? Performance-based bonus. So, yung performance-based bonus, as the word uh, connotes, hinahango doon sa iyong performance. At yung performance ay binabase doon sa iyong OPIP. Ano nilagay mo sa OPIP? Pinerform mo ba yan? Naperform mo ba yan? Beyond minimum. Yung mga targets na nakasulat doon are minimum targets. Pag na-reach mo yan, satisfactory lang yan. If you uh, perform beyond above the targets, mas mataas, siguro kahit dalawang points lang, uh, you'll be entitled to performance-based bonus. Anong catch? The OPIF and SPMS uh, encourages uh, teamwork. Kung merong isang mission na lackluster na performance, laggard, hindi na hindi na isasagawa na maayos yung kanyang mga targets while all the rest are performing the best they can and are overshooting their targets. Hindi lahat, damay lahat. Wala sa PPP. Kasi kung merong naiiwan, kailangan tulungan para o kailangan encourage o kailangan pukpukin siguro para maka -cope para hindi apektado ang performance ng iba. At yung ibang performance ng ibang units, kahit maganda, hindi siya mabibigyan ng bonus, yung ibang units ay hindi maganda performance. Nahihila pababa. Kaya kailangan magtulungan. O kailangan i-remind na ang kapwa unit para, wait, keep up with your targets, otherwise we are affected. Yung lack of performance. Ganun ang, ganun ang konsepto niyang PBB, Performance Based Bonus. It's not just for a unit, but it's actually collective bonus. Parang one for all, all for one. Ganun ang lumalabas. Okay? Balikan natin yung SPMS at saka yung CPRM output. Yung SPMS, tinutuos doon yung mga processes. At dinidefine, pagkatapos mong tuusin yung mga processes, titingnan yung individual roles ng bawat isa. Sa bawat process, sino ang dapat na lead actor? Sino support? Okay? Para ma-establish yung individual accountabilities. Sino lead, sino ang support? So normally, sabihin ng ating kung 
Iakapalin natin sa ating mga interagency partners, normal na maririnig mo sa DILG, partner natin sa BRAC. Kung yung CHR sa baba, regional office, eh hindi nag-i-initiate, hindi gumagalaw para sa BRAC, eh ba't sila gagalaw? Eh support, sabihin nila ay assistory lang sila. They only assist. You initiate, we assist. You do something, we support. Parang ganun. So, kung yung lead actor, hindi gumagalaw, uh, hindi rin daw, mag-iintay lamang yung nagpe-perform ng assistory role. Yun ang parati maririk mo. But that's no longer the rule of the game. Even if you are in the assistory role, you do not wait. Kung yung lead actor hindi gumagalaw, you have to remind the lead actor. You have to push the lead actor. Why do something? Because I'm affected in terms of your performance. Wala akong bonus. Yung performance ko may hila pa baba. So even if you are performing only as a story role, you do not just wait. If there is a need, you push the lead actor to do something. It's not uh, a waiting game. It's always proacting and preempting the performance of all those targets that we have charted out, planned for a given performance period. So itong ating session na ngayon, today, uh, hopes to give you some enlightenment on what we have already in store and provides to you a forum where you can contribute your insights uh, in the spirit of uh, constructive criticism, gather your comments uh, on what we already have. And uh, kano may yung mga komentaryo, ano may yung mga suggestions, lahat yan ay ating pagsasamasamahin and we shall assert that what we think is best for the human rights promotion in the country should be the one that should be reflected in our opinion. Remember what I just said, na ang 2013-2014 is considered to be experimental period. So therefore, nothing is cast on stone. Walang naka-engrave sa bato na mga performance indicators. Those can be changed according to what can be best for our purposes. And on that note, again, we open our program. Magandang umaga. Okay, next session. Ako tayo tumuloy. Gusto nating malaman kung ano ang ang expectation, round robin lang ha, ng bawat isa, dito sa ating one-day program. Simula tayo kay TI. Expectation nyo for this whole day. Isipa, go to Bebot, expectation. Give only two. Maximum of two. Uh, clear understanding of what is MFO, is PMS, and OPIF, at saka maintindihan lahat ng buong promotion group kung ano yung pinag-uusapan natin ito. Okay, next. Um, enlightenment on the effect or the advantages on this OPIF strategy. Uh, okay, ulit. Enlightenment. Ano? Na maintindihan namin mabuti. Okay. Mm, yung process of how we will do sa ating work yung yung copy at saka SPMS. Alright. Para malaman at maunawaan kung ano yung napapaloob sa promotion. Okay. Uh, we ex uh, I expect a, a uh, clear and uh, Uniform performance indicator for all promotions group. Alright. Ako din, yung mismal understanding and appreciation ng lecture today. Okay, lectures. Realistic 
and no nonsense uh, tackling of uh, tackling of uh, how we approach things. All right. Yeah, the regions, paki type na yun yung expectation sa chat. Hey, regions, paki paki type na sa chat yung yun yung expectations. Thank you. So proceed. Okay. Uh, everything about OPIF and SM, SPMS. All right. Expecting that all the uh, responsible persons be able to explain very well about the subject. All right, so expectation for speakers. In layman's term, ano ba ang magiging role ko, maintindihan, bang management-wise, practical-wise, ano mang wise na yan. Basta importante, maintindihan, individual uh, function at saka yung teamwork para okay. maiwasan yung misunderstanding at saka yung lamangan sa trabaho. Okay, malaban yan ha. May wasa ang lamangan sa trabaho sa ka. Okay. Like uh, what Pastor Mimi just said a while ago, uh, the bottom line of this activity, I think, is maintindihan ko kung ano yung magiging role ko sa ating unit, sa ating organization as a whole, and how do we connect it with our, you know, at the end of the at the end of this all, it, it's performance based and make a samang bonus. Okay. Good morning. Yung sa akin naman ay to know more about this OPIP kung ano man ang magiging uh, role ko, maikotribute ko. Alright. I to know more about SPMS and uh, what contribution I can uh, and what I can contribute. Alright. Thank you. I expect na initially ma mainstream ang education and research systems in relation to our SPMS para ma intertwine siya. Just initially kasi kahapon pa lang ang ating discussion dito. Okay. Sa akin naman para ma magkaroon ng full understanding about OPIF and SPMS dahil kailangan natin ito sa performance ng ating office. Alright. Um, hindi kailangan sa bonus? Uh, kailangan din, ma Mercy. That's why we have to do our very good teamwork. Okay, sige. Balikan natin si TI. Uh, si Raul. Expectation ni Raul. Yeah. Ano uli? All of the above daw siya. Si June, ano expectation mo, June? Oh, microphone kay June. Ayan ang microphone, June. Please grab a microphone. Uh, so, all of the above. Oh, sige. Wala nagsabi ng uh, food. <laughs> Anong nalaman nyo kanina? Walang food. Uh, walang food, ah. Pero siguro you'll be happy to, to know na papupuntahin ko si Jun para pick up in your food. Uh, but uh, it's snacks, ano? Uh, for, for the morning. Uh, pipick up in mo. Ready ba? Dapat pipick up in mo kanina. Kaya lang, eh. Okay, naka-ready na. No lunch, just snacks, morning and afternoon. Okay. Now we give the floor. So you know my expect yung ngayong araw na ito. May food, kaya alam, walang lunch. Pero meron snacks. Okay. Uh, ano yung reason? Na-explain na sa inyo kanina ni Darwin. Hindi ko na ulitin. So um, parang we're meeting halfway in terms of uh, expectations on food. Now, uh, let's welcome Ms. Greta Tarun, the Division Chief of the Planning and Programming Office, uh, the Division of SDPO, to... Uh, 
Uh, teka muna, pakinggan natin ang expectations ng regions. Kaya, babasahin ni Darwin. Uh, from Cagayan de Oro, uh, discussion on our performance indicators clearly and with uniform understanding for the whole CHR. To get the real picture of what is the indicators and targets of major final outputs of human rights promotion services and human rights education policy advisory services all about. Clear understanding of what OPF is all about. Region, region 1. Ayan. Region 2, clear understanding of how to plan target for activities and projects in order in order for this to uh, in order for this in order for this to be realizable and contributory to the office uh, very satisfactory performance <laughs> May snack din daw ba sa regions? Daba. Uh? At their own account daw. Uh. Okay, yun lang po. Ate Ami, ano daw ang tanong, ano daw ang expectations nyo? Ang um, mga expectations namin, first, hindi namin alam ko mga ano indicators ang dapat ilagay. And then, itong dalawang IOs naman, kasi hindi namin alam kung paano ito mag-operate. Iniisip pa nila kung anong expectations. Uh, we will just be listening. Nabirinig mo ba kami? Yes, yes, yes. Ay, Abby, Amelia, yan lang ba? Ako lang kasi ang nakamalanig ng big na audio. Uh, may difference dito sa mga gadgets na video type. Hindi na nakakuha yung bot dito. So, the two animals could also listen to what is happening in, in this live streaming. If we may have, we better have a Ami, makinig ka. May suggestion si Bebo Tito. Tanggaling mo daw yung headset mo at ilagay mo sa speaker. Palitan ng speaker para marinig ng iba dyan. Ang speaker namin is not also functioning. May ilaw lang. Dapat nito, ibalibag na yung mga ko. O sige, halika. Balibag natin. Salamat sa inyo mga expectations. Uh, yung iba sinabi nyo, hindi kayang matugunan ngayon kasi nakafocus lang tayo sa sharing ng ating 
OPIP and PMS, uh, hindi pa ito final. Uh, the sharing of what are already in place para naman hindi tayo naiiwan sa ganitong discussion. At para din naman makahabol kayo, makakontribute sa finalization nitong OPIP and PMS. At para mas magi malinaw kung ano nga itong OPIP, well, let us welcome Ms. Greta Tarun to orient us on this. Good morning po sa ating lahat. Good morning sa ating mga taga-regions. At I'm sure um, nakuha nyo na yung holistic overview ng OPIF and SPMS dun sa background in action ni Ma'am Elsie. Uh, what I am going to discuss is the... Outline, yung una po. Outline of my presentation would cover yung background and rationale of the DBM circulars and including civil service circulars din on OPIF and SPMS. But Sir Benny will discuss the SPMS this afternoon. And the clarification in inputs on basic concepts and principles and CHR processes in the formulation of the OPIF and discussion on the elements and how we were able to derive those uh, OP, OPIF thing. Ano ho ba yung OPIF? Ang uh, nasabi na po ni Ma'am Elsie kanina na it's, ito ay um, major shift of the Pino administration from yung previous na output, input-based budgeting from results-based budgeting. So ito ay a results-based budgeting tool introduced by the DBM in the past administration and carried on by the Aquino administration to institutionalize the process in financing the Philippine Development Plan. At uh, nagbigay din kanina si Ma'am Elsie kung ano ba yung nakapapaloob sa Philippine Development Plan. Kasama po yung Pinoy's uh, social contract to the Filipino people. Uh, OPIF is one of the public expenditure reforms of the government to achieve fiscal discipline or allocative efficiency or spending money on the right priorities or value for money. Uh, in short, it's yung ina-apply nila yung transparency and accountability. Gusto nilang makita saan natin ginagastos ang perang nire-release ng DBM. Kung right priorities daw ba natin ginagastos ang lahat ng perang lumalabas sa kanilang kaban. Pinet, kaban ng bayan. Uh, OPIF is linking the agency's programs, activities, and projects, major final outputs, and performance indicators to organizational outcomes, sectoral outcomes, societal goal, as defined the five key result areas of the Aquino administration. Yung 16 point, yung social contract ni Pinoy was retranslated into five result areas. If you know them, yun yung inclusive growth and poverty reduction, uh, integrity of the environment, peace and rule of law, yung mga yun. Uh, Dapat daw yung ating programa or major final outputs at indicators natin ay nagko-contribute para ma-achieve yung sectoral outcome or societal goal ng ating uh, gobyerno. So yun yung tinitingnan nila ngayon, yung activities, hindi na puro activities, kundi yung, yung programa mo ba ay nagko-contribute doon para ma-achieve yung societal goal or sectoral outcomes. Okay, next uh, DBM circular issued on November 28, November, issued on 28 November 2011, the objective of the, of the government to use results-based budgeting system as basis for allocating 
budget and monitoring, reporting and evaluating department AG per agency performance. Ito na po yung tinitingnan nila yung para tayo ma-evaluate. Yung OPIF natin, yung nakapaloob doon, nagawa ba natin, nagamit ba natin ng tama ang mga resources natin. And main rationale of programs, activities, and projects restructuring is to establish the link of the POPs to the MFOs for better cost estimation and expenditure prioritization. So, meron yung, yung circular po, the DBM issued yung circular for us to review, to amend, and to enhance yung ating POPs, yung ating mga indicators, para po tumugma doon sa, sa objective ng OPIF. At common po itong OPIF sa lahat po ng entire bureaucracy, entire government. Pero doon nung 28 November 2012, wala, yung circular nila, wala pong reference guide. So nahihirapan po kami, especially yung technical working group, kung paano yung process kasi wala pong inis yung reference guide na i-follow until next slide until nung 13 June 2011 na meron na siyang OPIF reference guide nakalagay doon sa kanilang letter na CFAG members are encouraged to use this guide in crafting reinventing the OPIF pero sabi natin ay eh, Tinanong namin yung ibang sifa kung kailangan ba nating sumunod. Eh, since kailangan natin ng budget, wala tayong choice. Otherwise, sabi nga ni Ma'am Elsie kanina, hindi i-re-release yung ating budget. And submission of agency OP after submission of NEP to Congress in July 2012, yung ating budget proposal ay OP, ano na siya, structure. Next. So, para medyo mas maintindihan pa natin kung ano yung OPIF, OPIF is an approach to expenditure management that directs resources for major final outputs toward results and measures department agencies by key quality, quanti by key quality quantity timeliness and cost indicators. So ito po yung pinaghirapan nating i-develop yung ating indicators. OPIF seeks to drive performance efficiency improvements by improving accountability for results in government agencies. And OPIF shifts the focus of accountability to MFOs or major final outputs delivered with respect to activities funded through the regular budget. So, resulta na po or impact ang tinitingnan ng DBM doon sa ating mga activities. Ano yung impact? Ano yung outcome na, na nangyari? Para masabi natin na OPIF, ano yung ating mga activities? OPIF compliant. Next. Ito yung ano, yung a PDP, Philippine Development Plan of the Aquino Administration. Sabi kanina, good governance, yung five key result areas. Good governance, peace and rule of law, integrity of environment, inclusive growth, and poverty reduction. So yung tuwid na daan ni Pinoy. Kung walang corrupt, walang mahirap. Ito yung OP framework, yung pinakamataas niya. Later on, makikita natin kung ano yung societal goal. And then sectoral outcomes, or organizational outcomes, MFOs, and POPs. And then dun sa baba ng POPs, nandun na yung targets natin, indicators and targets. From the indicators and targets, dapat daw nakatugma, align doon, pataas. Kailangan nagko-contribute sila. Yung POPs mo sa MFOs, Organizational Outcomes, Sectoral Outcomes, and Societal Goal. Next. Ano ba yung Societal Goal? Societal Goal describes the intended desirable impacts of MFOs on a society. Ito yung pangkalahatan gusto nang nating makita sa ating society. 
yun daw yung societal goal. Intended desirable impacts of our major final outputs on our society. Next. Ano naman yung sectoral outcomes? Sectoral outcomes are the longer term benefits for the sector from the initiatives of the department or agency. Itong mga terms na ito or definitions are from the DBM OPIF guide. Organizational outcomes are the short to medium term benefits to clients and community as a result of delivering our major final outputs. Short to medium term benefits to our external clients and community. And next time. Um, I'd just like to use a few processes in the formulation of our OPIF. Matagal pong, sabi ni Ma'am Elsie kanina, inabot po ng taon o dalawang taon na bago natin matapos yung ating OPIF, especially yung ating indicators. Uh, first, yung workshop and indicators. Nandun nata si Yami noon. Workshop and indicators in Tagaytay on August 2011 para i-revise yung ating OPIF based on the STRAT plan under the nurture person and to come up with performance indicators and targets. And after that, uh, nagkaroon din ng DBM circular issued in 2011. And then from that, nag-create ng PWG composed of SDPO, FMO, and GAO to finalize yung indicators na output from Tagaytay. Next. And then after that, we conducted a series of meetings and consultations with the central directors. However, no consensus on indicators. Kasi nga, sa dami ng pwedeng gustong ilagay na indicators, eh, hindi po magkaintindihan. So in response to DBM circulars, to review the OPIF, SDPO proposed for increase in the number of M MFOs based on the OPIF guide and submitted to DBM for initial review. Naging anim po, from three na original na MFOs natin, we increased it to, to six. Kasi lahat ng opisina, syempre gusto makita yung kanilang uh, programa na major final output. So naging six siya. So after review ng DBM, ang sa kanilang recommendation, we should go back to three, yung original as per OPIF book in 2009. Ang ni-revise lang nila yung isang MFO doon from promulgation of human rights norms and standards to human rights policy advisory services. Pero sabi nila, uh, i-maintain yun na lang yung tatlo para mas maliwanag sa tingin nila. So yun yung kanilang recommendation. And then yung Yung recommendation ng DBM, we was presented again to the directors. And then, again, marami na namang, alam mo na, marami reaction, maraming comments, so, <laughs> violent reaction. And but and BD, DBM was forced to explain and discuss OPIF and critic CHR's OPIF during the directorate conference in November. So, na tinawag na natin sila para mag-explain sa atin ano ba talaga yung ating OP, especially ano ba yung MFOs natin and indicators. And finally, oh, kasi ma'am, uh, noong una ayaw nilang sabi, oo, oh, persahan, kailangan pumunta kayo. <laughs> kasi hindi na namin paano sagutin <laughs> yung mga komento ng bawat ano, sina. So, sila na mismo. Hmm. So, nandun sila during the directorate conference. At sila yung nag-critic dun sa output natin. So, finally, approval of the commission of the directorate conference adoption of the OPIF, MFOs and indicators as basis of budget preparation for 2013 proposed budget. So, yun yung ginamit natin for our budget proposal. At in na rin ng commission and bank with minor corrections. Next.
Okay. Tapos discussion with DBM in March 13. After that approval, nagkaroon ng budget forum kasi may mga uh, directors na nagsign paano yung mga new laws, new human rights laws, yung GAD, IDP, yung Human Security Act, yung IHL. So I raised that during the budget forum if we can still uh, refine or fine-tune our indicators uh, based dun sa ating new laws. So nagtawag ng, ng meeting ang DBM and we clarified that. Ang sabi nila, ilagay na muna dun sa... Kasi tapos na yung kanilang executive committee uh, meeting. So ilagay na lang daw muna natin as major pop especially yung God. Hindi na muna nila... Kasi nag... Nag-propose tayo ng additional MFO, yung Adjudication and Violations of God and IDP. Since the President vetoed the IDP law, so yung God na lang ang pinupus na, namin na natin na additional MFO sana because of our new functions doon. Pero ang sabi ng DBM, ilagay na lang daw muna natin as major activity, major program under the protection services. So, nakapark yun. Uh, hindi siya MF. And then, discussion with central directors during live streaming with regional directors for target setting per MFO indicator. And presentation to the commission and bank and approval of the 2013 proposed budget and performance targets per MFO. Yun na yung nasa, nasa inyo. So yun po yung proseso ang pinagdaanan ng ating OPIF, ang madugong proseso. Next. Ito na po yung ating OPIF, yung Organizational Performance Indicator Framework. Yung societal goal natin, ito nasa PDP ito. Inclusive Growth and Poverty Reduction. Ang sector outcome natin, ang sabi dati ng... Ang sabi ng NEDA, namili lang daw ng isa doon sa sector outcome. Ang sabi naman natin, nagkocontribute tayo sa dalawang sector outcome. So, good governance and the rule of law and peace and security. Yun yung dalawang nating sector outcomes. Ang ating organizational outcome outcomes are violations of human rights effectively addressed and remedied Human rights mechanisms strengthened and human rights culture evolved and sustained. This was approved by all the, the directors and the commission and bank. And our three MFOs, human rights protection services, human rights policy advisory services, and human rights promotion services. Yung new MFO natin ay nakapark po yan. Next then. <clears throat> Paano ba yung pag-formulate ng MFO? So ito yung process na base dun sa guidelines ng DBM na i-gather daw lahat nung, nung ating mandato, isulat lahat at tingnan kung ano yung mga generic na services bago natin makita kung ano yung major final outputs. So based dun sa recommendation nila, ito po yung ginawa natin na nilist down lahat ng mandates and the general services para makita kung anong um, major final outputs. I-run down mo na lang. I'm sure alam nyo naman yung ating mandates. Doon sa policy advisory. Ayan, yung sa Human Rights Promotion Services. Ito yung mandate natin. Establish a continuing program of research, education, information to enhance respect for the primacy of human rights. So, in generic services, policy and program development or capacity building services under the major final output na Human Rights Promotion Services. So yung ating mga new human rights laws. 
So, Human Rights Protection din and Human Rights Policy Advisory Services. Kaya yun yung recommendation nila to, for us to maintain yung tatlo, protection, promotion, and policy. Okay, a brief ano lang, what is MFO? A major final output is a good or service that a department agency is mandated to deliver to external clients through the implementation of programs, activities, and projects. Ang MFO ay pang external clients po yun. Goods and services that we deliver to our external clients. Next Ano ba yung pasuro? Expert na kayo dito. What are POPs? What is a program, activity, or project? Okay. Program, an integrated group of activities that contribute to a particular continuing objective of a department or agency. Activity is a work process that contributes to the implementation of a program or sub-program or project. And project is a special department or agency undertaking carried out within a definite time frame and intended to result in some predetermined measure of goods and services. May duration yung project siya. Next. Okay. Ito yung budget structure. POPs are also classified according to expense, class, personal services, MOOE and capital outlays. Next. The POPs are classified by cost structure into general administration and support, overall administrative and management support to the entire agency operation. Example is general management and supervision, Human Resource Development, Financial and Administrative Services, yung ating GAS. Next. Support to operations, technical and substantive support to the operations and projects of the agency. Example, yung SDPO planning and policy formulation, program monitoring and evaluation, research and development, statistical services, information systems development and planning public information. These are support to operations. And operations are directed towards fulfilling agency mandates and drive the MFOs. Uh, yung operations, yung core mandates natin, yun yung po yung ating operations. Activities which are classified as GAS or STO, but which we represent the core function of the agency should be classified as operations. Example nit po nito is yung NEDA, a core function nila yung planning, unlike sa, uh, CHR na support to operations. So ang NEDA, core function nila ang planning, so nasa operations nila. So unlike sa, sa CHR, ang planning is support to operations. Mm -mm. Kung yun yung man, pinaka-mandate ng agency. Next. What is performance indicator? It is a characteristic of performance, quantity, quality, timeliness, or cost, which will be measured to illustrate the standard of performance by which a department agency has delivered its MFOs. Quantity indicates volume of output. Yun yung nabibilang. Quality indicates how well the output is delivered. Timeliness indicates the rate at which output is delivered to our clients. And cost indicates amount of input or budget allocation used to produce an output. Important characteristics of a good PI. It should be client-based, within agency's control, provide stable specification from one period to the next, and generate a time series of data. 
and measures the MFO, the major final output, and captures the essential characteristics of the MFO delivered to end beneficiaries. And uh, a good PI is used for decision making and meaningful to both government and end client. So, laging ang ating atinitin na yung ating external client or our, yung ating end client. Okay. Uh, skip na natin. We'll go directly dun sa anong human rights promotion service. Ay yung magbuong M ano, indicators na. Okay. okay. We will run through daw yung buong kasi may reg regional ano, viewers. Okay, ito po yung ating tatlong MFO, yung Human Rights Protection Services. Uh, for the information of everyone, it lahat, ang il, ito po ay approved na ng DBM, preloaded na sa kanilang website. Approved na rin ng commission, syempre, bago sinabmit sa DBM. And we, oh, naka-resolution ito. Yung set one ng Human Rights Protection Services, Quantity, number of persons assisted, quality, percentage of complainants, clients dissatisfied with services rendered. Yung timeliness niya is percentage of complainants evaluated within three working days prior to the prescribed period. And cost is cost per client. Next. Set two of human rights protection services, quantity, number of resolved cases with final action, quality, percentage of resolved HRV cases resulting in victims' access to remedies, timeliness, percentage of cases resolved within five working days prior to the prescribed period, and cost per resolved case. For the Human Rights Promotion Services, set one, quantity, number of participants who completed human rights education activities, quality, percentage of participants who passed the post-training tests, and timeliness, percentage of human rights education activities implemented as scheduled and cost per participant. Set one po yan ng Human Rights Promotion Services. For set two, number of human rights IEC materials developed and disseminated, percentage of stakeholders that rate human rights IEC materials as good or better, percentage of human rights IEC materials disseminated as scheduled, and cost per human rights IEC material. Set 3, number of celebratory promotional human rights events held, quality percentage of the target population who are aware of CHR held events. Ang timeliness niya is percentage of human rights events held as scheduled and cost per human rights event. Three sets po yung human rights promotion services. And the last, yung Human Rights Policy Advisory Services, Set 1, Number of Human Rights Policies Issued and Disseminated, Qualities, Percentage of Stakeholders that Rate Human Rights Policies as Good or Better, Timeliness, Percentage of Human Rights Policies Issued in the Last Three Years that Are Reviewed and Are Updated and Disseminated, and Cost is Cost per Policy Issuance. Set 2, Number of treaty reports and human rights situational reports issued and submitted. Qualities, percentage of reports rated by stakeholders as good or better. Timeliness is percentage of reports released within two days before the schedule and cost per report.
Okay. What is performance target setting? A performance target is described by a numerical target of performance against which actual performance can be compared and which a mean standard deviation and trend, trend line can be calculated over time. So numerical target of performance against actual performance. Lahat ba, ma'am? Tingnan natin ang, tar ang targets or promotion. Promotion. Okay. For the Human Rights Promotion Services, dun sa number of participants, under quantity, number of participants who completed human rights education activities, ang, oo, oh, oh. ayun pala, explain ko. <laughs> Nag, Binago namin yung target kasi nag-assume kami ng 2,000, yung estimated lang, 2,000 per region. Kasi yung dati nating figure, pag dinivide mo, pag may, we submitted that to the, ano, to DBM. Oo. Pero nag-resubmit kami kasi sabi ni Mang, yun na nga po. Uh, ano lang, nag- Kasi hindi na siya, ang binibase kasi namin, yung in ng N-Bank na pinanigay niyo. Yes, yes. So yung malaking figure ngayon dyan, meron na bang resolution na nilabas ang commission dyan para isubmit doon sa DBM? Kasi sa regions, ang alam nila yung previous na pinadala natin. So that means, you are, uh, you are, you are giving us targets, not us setting our targets. Oo, kasi hindi kami inform about that. Eh, Magre-react ang region dyan for sure. Imagine, 30,000, 50,000. Eh, Yung dating number natin is 2,000. 29,000. Ano? Napakaliit. 29. Hindi. Malaki din. Pero malaki pa rin. Round na. off lang namin actually. Para ma kasi ang you know, rounded 29 off lang. Okay, napakalaki ha. Sa 2014, it is only uh, dito sa 2014. Sobrang laki dyan. 30,919 dyan. 50,000. Ang explanation, kasi humingi ang DBM ng basis natin for setting the targets. Nag-submit nag kami, pero may basis. Ang nilagay namin dito, the 2013 target is the estimated total number of participants assumed as assumed as uh, follows. 2000 Packs per region times 15, 15 regions. But uh, let me see first, uh, kasi sa hmm. usapan natin noon, wait Darwin, sa usapan natin noon, you have also, also to consider the budgetary requirements for 2013 and 2014. That's why ito, basahin ko na muna yung aking basic, I mean basis. Sabi, di yun, two, assumed as 2,000 packs per region times 15 regions or an average of 300 packs, uh, 500 packs per quarter per region. The increase in target is based on the proposed increase in the budget for 2013. So, kung hindi nila ibibigay, ang yun yung sabi namin sa DBM, hindi namin natin ma-achieve yung sinet natin targets. Kung hindi nila ibibigay yung request natin for increase. Kaya sila humingi ng inilagay namin natin sa basis. Ito yun. Kasi nag-request tayo ng increase in budget. So, kung hindi nila ibigay yun, hindi sabihin natin, hindi natin na-achieve dahil walang hindi binigay. Oo. Organized and co-organized co naman eh. Yes. And or yan or or lang. Kaya tayo, kami nag-increase ng gano'n. Or, or so, organized. Sorry kasi hindi namin ina-inform kayo. Mm -hmm. Is a uh, we are the one, this is the promotion services performing or achieving the target. Yes, yes. Sana man lang, through a memo, oy, promotion, ito ang aming plano sa DBM, aminable ba kayo dito? Kasi, 
nagulat ka na lang bigla, meron ng ganong data. Oh, ito kasi lalabas pa lang na, I mean, with a memo, kasi sinabmit lang ito nung Friday sa DBM. Nung 21, during the budget meeting. So, sinabay namin sinabmit. Ito yung deadline natin, ma'am, di ba, nung nag-meeting tayo last time with the DBM. Ano ka? Para dun sa Human Rights Resource Center mo. Mm -hmm. So, mingi sila ng basis for our target setting. Uh, yung pinag-use pin nyo, hindi ko nakita. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Ilalabas pa lang namin po ito, ma'am. Wala lang magsasign pa nung, nung memo. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so, kung please uh, take note of all your questions. Maka makalimutan ninyo. So, isulat ninyo. No, ako may questions, pero hindi ko ni-interrupt si Greta para lang to manage the time better. Oo. Uh -oh. uh, para lang ma-justify natin na kailangan magbigay kayo ng budget. Otherwise, hindi natin namin ma-accomplish yan. So, Lahat ng targets natin, nilagyan namin ng ganon. Unless you release to us the, our proposed increase in the budget, we will not be able to accomplish yung ating targets. So, yung ating regional participants, uh, we also advise them to, to write in the chat their questions if they have any dito sa presentation ni Ms. Greta Taro. Okay. Let's proceed. Thirty, oh yes, thirty and fifty. Quality percentage of participants who passed the post training tests. Ang ating definition is learning evaluation can be in the form of post training. Meron naman kayo nito, di ba? Feedback form and others. So ang target natin is seventy percent for uh, 2013 and 2014. Next. Timeliness, percentage of human rights education activities implemented is scheduled. Schedule is based on the submitted annual, annual work plan to the Commission and Bank. So 70%. Are you Yung cost, sabi naman ng DBM, is optional muna. Oh. Yung costing. Yes. Wala pang binigay na ceiling. Wala pa. Uh, kasi meron tayong sinabit na na pinasa nanit natin yung targets para ibigay ng DBM yung hinihingi nating budget. Hindi ba makakatulong kung ilalagay natin yung posting dyan para justify yung hinihingi nating budget? Hindi ba pwede yun? So, kasi yung pagkukost, eh. so sabi ng DBM, iwanan nyo muna para makapag-proceed kayo. Hindi tayo pa rin yun. Object, objection noted. Okay. Proceed. Next. Okay. Number of human rights IEC materials developed and disseminated. Alam niyo, HRC materials include brochures, pamphlets, flyers, modules, research papers, and others. So yung target ninyo natin, national target naman ito, it's 10 and 15. Ang accomplishment ninyo noong 2012 was 5, yung IEC materials develop nyo. Actually, ang sinabmit ninyo was 17. So nireduce namin ng 10 para naman hindi achievable. Quality, 70% pa rin, 2013-2014. Okay. Timeliness, 70%. Approve nyo naman ito, di ba? Um, itong inyong target, yun naman nag-set. Um, yes. 
itong targets nyo for these indicators? Sinabmit ninyo, ma'am, ito? So, uh -huh. And yung next set, darling. Next. Okay, number of celebratory promotional human rights events, 161 for 2013 and 185 for 2014. Ang, ang basis natin dito, kayo ba nag-set dito? Ganun pa rin. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Sige ma'am kami. Actually, ito based dun sa estimated total number din na submitted by the regions. Sila yung nag-set per region ma'am. So, tinutal lang namin yung sinabmit nila per region. Kasama na yung inyo. So, 161 and 185 for 2014. Next. Quality, 70%. Still, for 2013 and 2014. Timeliness. Communication. Wala pa rin ako nakita. Dapat si Sir Benny ata ang gagawa nito eh. Communication plan. Diba? Si Sir Benny. Okay, next. Com plan ay manggagaling sa ating GAO director. Ang timeliness schedule is based on the submitted annual work plan to the Commission and Bank. 90%. Held as schedule, kasi sabi ng DBM, pag held as schedule, dapat daw 100, 100%. Oo. So, yun ang... <laughs> Joy, ha? Kasi masakit ang kamay ko. <laughs> na, naayos nyo na ba yung ni-raise namin noon na although 70% ang idalagay dyan na as schedule? Pero ang assumption ng DBM, 100% kasi in schedule. Mm. So during our uh, workshop before, yung last, inano namin na may mga, may mga pangyayari na rin natin control. Kasi hindi naman lahat ng activities ay tayong nagpupundo. So sabi naman ni Miss Nere, kanya daw iaano sa DBM yun, na hindi tayo makaka-assume lagi ng 100% kung anong schedule natin. Kasi hindi lang tayo nag implement may mga co-organize tayo, di ba? So hanggang ngayon ba 100% pa rin yung inano ng DBM? Yun pa rin ang nasa kanilang explanation nila dun sa kanilang guidelines na pag uh, activities schedule, dapat daw 100%. Hindi mo naman pwedeng i-advance siyempre ang isang activity. Yun yung marami pa rin clarifications na dapat din tayo maliwanagan. Kaya lang, Sabi nga natin sa work in progress, eh, experiment pa lang ito. So ang DBM din actually na wiwindang dito sa mga reforms <laughs> ng, uh, oh, oh, sa dami ng kanilang reforms na pinapa-implement, sila din ay ano, naguguluhan din. Oh. Yes. <laughs> okay. Next. <laughs> Tapos na ata. Next, uh, set 3. Ay, may nang policy promotion. Policies issued in December. Policy advisory na yan, ma'am. Okay. Education policy, okay. Dito sa Human Rights Policy Advisory Services, ang indicator for quantity is number of human rights policies issued and disseminated. Targets is 15 for 2013 and 20 for 2014. Quality niya is 20 to 20% 20 for 2013 and 30% for 2014. Yes. Uh, percentage of human rights policies issued in the last three years that are reviewed and updated and disseminated, 40 and 50 percent. 
40 for 2013 and 50 for 2014 and cost per human right policy issue ones. Ang set 2 under policy, human rights policy advisory services number of treaty reports and human rights situational reports issued or submitted and submitted 20 for 2015 and 25 for 2014. Quality, 70% for 2013 and 80% for 2014. And timeliness is 70 for 2013 and 80% for 2014. Okay. The questions. Okay, your regions may question paki sulat lang sa chat. Ang question na regions, pangi daw kopya ng iyong uh, presentation. Okay, okay lang po. Ba? Noted po. Okay. So, email, okay lang. We will email it to you. Okay, uh, just a note. Um, Doon sa website ng DBM, meron silang publication naka upload doon yung Organizational Performance Indicator Framework as of. 2012. So, pwede yung uh, number one basis natin, yung kung ano yung nandun sa DBM website. Sa menu nila, makikita nyo na DBM publications ang title. Okay? At uh, ito yata present ni Greta. Yung dun sa inisyo nilang mga circulars. O, oh, base din dun sa Ay, DBM circulars. Guidelines. And, and reference guide. Okay. Any questions? So, si Joy. Um, question. Um, Hello. Ma'am, uh, nasa July na po tayo. Then, yung sa advocacy division po kasi, nag-start po kami ng activity noong January pa. Right. Na po namin na uh, natignan to yung may post test and feedback forms. Eh, quality po yata ito. Uh, Ma'am, paano po ang gagawin namin ngayon since natapos na po yung first, uh, first semester ng taon eh, hindi kami nakapag-produce o nakagawa ng feedback for post-training test. Parang po namin uh, abot ng 70%. Uh, Pakinggan natin si Greta, kano'ng sagot? Anong yung dun, tungkol dun sa feedback form? Yes. Oh. Yes, as early as now, dapat meron na kayong na-develop na feedback form. Kasi yun yung gagamitin ninyo pag after ng before and after nung inyong uh, activity, yung evaluation ng inyong activity. And, paano yung paggagawa? Kami na rin gagawa? Yes, yun yung, dis yung discussion nung nakaraan na uh, central office ang gagawa na standard for all pati kasama yung regions kayo magbibigay sa regions huh? okay. nung nung pati sa regions form. yes and one, one thing more uh, yung yung aming mga yung timeliness kasi uh, yung mga activities namin kung hindi cancelled na move so parang yung timeliness ay nagiging tardiness ang mga namin diyan title namin paano po ang aming i ano uh, po project ay na nakakancel eh, oh nang move ang ang usapan natin noon with Sir Benny when you, nung Sana. last workshop ay i-revise ninyo yung work plan na sasubmit niyo sa and bank kung nag-move nag-move yung activity ibaguhin niyo yung inyong work plan <laughs> ang na uh, everything is ready or implementation na. Nandiyan na. Ah, Inimbita mo si Vice President uh, Binay o go na. Or uh, go na. Two days before the, the actual event, biglang sabi ng uh, top management, eh, cancel the event. So, on schedule, on time, mga advocacy division, for implementation, pero last minute, ika nga, sabi ng ng kwan, Cancel the event kasi wala ako. May biyahe ako. Oh. 
Oo. Alam mo, we, we raised that to the DBM. Kasi alam naman natin na ganun yung nangyayari, kalimitan. Ang sabi nila, you can revise, submit a revised work plan. And state the reasons why na moved yung activity. Oo Kasalanan nga. ng management and the more na may reason kayo. Oo. Oo nga, Gretz. Ganun na nga yun. Pa na, uh, yung timeliness. Paano kung next year, ganun na naman. Ang chairman o ang Yes. Oo. Uh, kaya nga, we... Pag-re-revise na naman. Mm -hmm. Kasi sa kakad, ganun na yun. Re-revise namin. But, pagkatingin na ng August, Pero pagdating naman na September, October, November, eto na naman siya. Okay, move nyo yan o i-cancel nyo yan. Ano na naman ang gagawin na namin dyan? Ayun yung timetable na, yung... time time na sisira. Oo, yes, I, kami ang I understand. Okay lang kung sila magsaper, pero kami ang magsasaper. Kaya nga sinasabi natin sa Commission and Bank na commitment ito ng agency, hindi lang ng isang division. So, so sa kanila sa isang o oh, kung isang tao buong agency ano ito target eh so kung magfe-fail ang sila sila sa kanila pala nag-fail na so wala tayong magagawa so kailangan nga uh, i-orient sila lagi or remind sila lagi na ito yung commitment natin sa DBM na kailangan ma-achieve so ino-orient kailangan din nating i-orient yung EAs nila at yun din na in-emphasize during the N-Bank meeting ni Ma'am Nere na ganun na ngayon na kailangan alam nila kung ano yung kinumit natin sa DBM. Sige, uh, may question sa regions. Ang sabi ng Region 1, do we still have to submit copies of the post-training test conducted or simply indicated that in our report? At meron po ang pangalawa, because of budgetary constraint, we only provide our participants the e-copy of our lectures, presentations. How do we count that? So, yung IEC material sila, ay yung kanilang presentation, e-copy. Dahil wala naman pondo, pang, uh, pang, pang uh, produce at pang print. So, kung ano nalang produce nila na presentation, yun ang kanilang IEC material. Anong count doon? Yun ang tanong. Sarili nilang de development. Mag There are instances, ma'am, na yung mga presentation nila nang gagaling sa central office. Pero meron naman na sila na mismo ang gumagawa ng kanilang mga uh, lectures, presentations. Doon sa develop, IEC materials develop. So, isa-isa natin. Yung una... Yung uh, kailangan ba mag-submit ng post-training test conducted, yung kopya ng mga test, o kailangan lang nilang indicate sa report nila? Paano nyo ba yan i- <laughs> Paano nyo ba yan i-count? O paano nyo i-treat yung ganyan, ma'am? Kasi kayo po mag-ano yan eh. Sa inyo isasubmit yan. Okay, kailangan yung post-training yun test. Yung process report na nang kasama uh, process uh, so nang i-attach yung process report yung yung mga got na mga participants uh, whether it's faithful uh, faithful uh, presentation of participants answers o o hindi ilagay na lang nila doon sa process report uh, the central office will uh, provide the the form for uh, for that uh, dahil uh, Bago pa lang ito, ididevelop pa lang yung ating reporting guide para dito sa mga bagong indicators na preset ng SDPO. Kasi ma'am, kung copies ng sasubmit nila, mas magastos yun. So, kailangan na process na yung sasubmit nila. September? Hmm. Yun ang sasubmit, yung process na evaluated. Kasi every... Activity conducted. Meron kasi tayong evaluation form for resource person and general evaluation for the whole activity. So, ipoprocess na yon kasi magbibigay naman sila isa-isang kopya no, sa participants. Tapos i-coculate nila, i-process nila yung result, yun ang i-attach nila doon sa kanilang accomplishment report na isasubmit sa central office para hindi bulky. Okay, so yung pangalawa... Nasaan yun? 
Ah, uh, yung bang i-copy ng kanilang presentations, paano mo i-account yan ng IEC material? So, you have to provide copies of your presentation as part of your report to the central office. And that is considered to be one IEC material. I-copy. Electronic copy. One. Ngayon, kung the same presentation is used, for different fora, different uh, sessions, isa lang ang count doon. If you improve it and develop uh, further in the subsequent fora, dalawa na ang count noon. Kung dinagdaga mo pa, in-update mo pa, tatlo na ang count noon. <laughs> Ganun ba yun? Ang usapan noon, uh, halimbawa, meron tayong ginawang IEC material ngayon. Uh, count one yon. Pero kung ni-revise mo, it's another one also. Pa bali, magiging dalawa na kung i -re revise mo. Every time na i revise mo yung material mo, syempre, maidadagdag ka, may babawasin ka, counted as one na uli yun. Ayun, sa dati pa rin. Sa dati pa rin. Ganun daw po ang kanilang agreement with Sir Benny. Ayan, so parang uh, we should come up with a compilation of all these uh, electronic uh, copies of presentations. What the central office can do later is to package this into uh, compendium of presentations. And with the, uh, maybe with a little improvement from central office for sharing to all regional offices with the authors uh, properly uh, bylined, maka bylined sa bawat uh, presentation. Kung siyang author, naka-indicate siyang author ng electronic uh, presentation. Okay, so ito naman sa Dabao. Good AM po, as lang po ma'am, the reason behind the exclusion of one-hour lecture at speaking engagement as part of our accomplishment. Uh, Tanayin natin SDPO, sila nagsasabi ng ganyan. Kasi yung indicator is... Uh, yung... Pagka... Or yung organized lang and co-organized, yun yung counted. Pero pag invited lang tayo at wala naman tayong sinel out na resources, hindi daw po yun counted. Based from the DBMs. Uh -huh. yeah, Diwag na lang yun na nga yung... Can I, ano, kasi yung nilinaw ma'am namin nun kay Benny, ito ang nilinaw namin kay Sir Benny. Kahit lecture lang yun, pero kung tayo ang nag-arrange, tayo ang nagbigay module natin yung ginamit at in-evaluate natin, ibig sabihin may hands-on tayo sa preparation, uh, we can still consider that as our uh, oh, accomplishment. accomplishment. Pero kung sinulatan ka lang at pumunta ka lang doon, lang. nagsalita ka lang, Wala. walang counter. So ang point doon, meron kang ginawang uh, partnership with that activity at in-evaluate mo. Kasi yung tinitingnan yung cost on the part of the commission kapag meron tayong sharing sa cost. Yun yung kinapaw. Kasi meron tayong cost indicator. Paano yan? Parang wala yan pinag-iba dito sa Human Rights Protection Service na dito, number of persons assisted. Wala kang control. Hindi mo pinogram yan. Pero pumunta sa iyo, nagre-request ng assistance. Tapos naglagay ka dyan ng target. Meron kang percentage of uh, nag-complain kung satisfied sila o hindi sa servisyo na binigay mo pagkatapos nila mag-complain. Eh halimbawa natin ito sa humingi ng servisyo mo, lecturean nyo naman kami sa human rights. Ha? So parang uh, yan, number of persons assisted ang kategorya niyan. Lecturean nyo naman kami sa human rights. Magbigay naman kayo ng session sa human rights. Sila ang nag-arrange. Wala kaming speaker. Pwede ba kayo speaker? Hindi ba yung papasok dyan? Demand-driven. Para katulad nito, uh, quantity na MFO1 na 
Yung tao, ang pumunta sa atin, hindi natin pinrogram. Di ba? Ngayon, yung tao pumunta sa atin, hindi natin pinrogram, please give lecture. Ano naman dating natin sa mga humihingi na ating servisyo kung sabihin natin, sorry, wala po yan sa aming kwan eh, performance target, uh, we cannot accept your invitation to lecture. Uh, pwede mo ba kayong mag-share uh, mag sa amin, mag, uh, mag-critic, sorry, wala po yan sa aming performance indicator, hindi po yan nire-rate. Uh, yeah, that, that's a waste of our time, we won't be evaluated uh, there. Yes, Yes, ni-raise na namin yan kay Sir Benny, ma'am. Paano na hindi mo maiiwasan yung mga lectures? Paano natin, paano nila ita-count yun? Ang very strict siya na kung ano lang yung guidelines, yun lang ang susundin. Anong so, guidelines? Sinong, guidelines? Guidelines ng SPMS, ma'am. Sino oh. gumawa nun? Civil Service. Oo. Oh. Civil Service ang gumawa ng SPMS? SPMS, oo. Oh, di titignan natin mamaya yung SPMS. Uh, Sinabi na tubo namin na. yan ka, actually kay Sir Ben, baka pwedeng internal na lang yung mga ganun, na pag hindi yung wala sa indicator, eh pwede namang ilista lang para as accomplishment ng isang ng individual. Marami kasi Mag ang... Mag-i-defeat daw ang purpose ng SPMS. Sige, okay. so ito, ipark muna natin yung question tungkol dyan. Uh, yung speaking engagement, ipapakita oh, natin that to the director. Ipapakita natin kay Benny, Benny. mamayang hapon. Okay? So, nakasave naman yan, ano, yung mga questions. Okay, so, pumunta tayo dito sa Cagayan de Oro. Can we discuss per MFO and its indicators na lang para masundan na lang? Pwede ba i-discuss na lang natin ang bawat MFO? Saka indicators. Uh, ganito, ganito na lang, ma'am. Uh, pag naayos na po yung process, uh, we intend to cascade this sa lahat ng regional offices. So, supposedly, yun yung plano before this year. Sana kaso lang, ma'am, dahil nag merong SPMS, hindi pa naayos yung proseso. So, tatapusin namin hanggang SPMS para minsanan na lang yung pag-cascade. Uh -uh. Pakiulit para mas malinaw sa regional participants. Okay, para sa ating regional participants, bababa po kami, ikakaskade po namin ang OPIF hanggang SPMS. Inaayos lang po yung proseso kasi hindi pa ho klaro o maayos yung SPMS. Pag once po na ayos na at okay na siyang, pwede na siyang ikaskade, dadalihin po namin sa inyo para mas maunawaan po ninyo. Uh Oo. -oh. So, may follow-up question. Sa mga indicators, hindi kasama yung research and monitoring. So, pakisama. Tapos, uh, uh, gagastos naman kayo sa cascading, ito naman, mahanap ng panggastos. Ang ating si Harold, some of our plan activities are not implemented on time due to lack of funds. Is there no additional budget for the plan activities that we submit quarterly to central office? Uh, quarterly naman nagsasubmit ng plan activities. Hindi naman natutugunan yung hinihingi ni ng pondo. Totoo Sino bang maka-action dyan? Sa hinihingi ng pondo? Commission, ma'am. Uh, commission. Hmm. Pero ma-action ng commission? Sino nagdadala sa atensyon ng commission? Should be the FMO. FMO and SDPO. Alam naman po na yun ng SDPO. Ng NBank. Alam yun na. lagi ang problema, yung kakulangan sa budget. Lagi naman pong bring out sa kanila, pero uh, ang siyempre ang action, eh, nasa kanila po. Uh, napapansin ko tumatayo na si Pope. Tinitignan yung ating food. Uh, pa kanyang binibless. Uh, may I digress for a while. Meron na tayong hand food. Ibig sabihin, hindi ka lang ng plato. Hawakan mo na lang ng kamay. Kung madumi ang kamay, mahugas muna. Kung okay lang na hindi na maghugas ang kamay, pwede nang pick up it. Sigigisa lang nandun sa tabi. Uh, it's uh, burritos. Ano? Yung, uh, ano, uh, eh, eh, si Darwin will take charge. Baka nagugutom na kasi iba. So you can pick up the food. Uh, 
uh, get your share. Kasi eksakto lang yan. <laughs> uh, for region 9 ba yun, ma'am? Yung, yung lack of activities are not as it caroled. Uh, Kinonsolidate namin lahat ng sinabmit ninyong activities. We submitted that to the commission. Ang, yun ang hindi po namin alam kung ano po status. I will request si Kwan, si Joanne to please help in the food uh, distribution. Okay. Thank you. Kati mga guest. <laughs> so, kagayang de oro. Performance indicator, should it be interpreted as output or outcome? Sa kanya, output is immediate yan. Ang outcome... Ano yung outcome? Outcome is putol. Ano mo na si taas? Performance indicator. Should it not be something that is controlled by a variable? Therefore, number of participants should not be the basis for performance indicator because number of participants are considered uncontrolled variable. Okay? Anong sagot? Nirace na rin naman namin yan, ma'am, sa DBM. At meron silang, uh, yan din yung kanilang suggestion na mas madaling yan ang gamitin nating indicator. Kasi yun yung ready. Bakit kapag sabi nila mag-iisip ng indicator na, na wala, parang mahirap. Eh. Meron kasi akong kami na mga sinabit in the past na mga proposed indicators uh, uh, na hindi namin nakita eh, in any uh, final presentation of SDPO sa Commission and Bank. Uh, uh, katulad ng client-based uh, human rights education training programs. So pag nilagyan mo, number of client-based human rights education training programs, mas controllable yon. Ilan sa military, ilan sa police, ilan sa academe. Client-based human rights education training programs. Tapos naka-plans out doon, gaano pa yung mga further indicators? So, uh, ma'am, kinonsolidate namin nila na i-present yan during the Tagaytay workshop. Pero sila yung nag-finalize at nag-namili ng mga indicators. Okay, so, so itong indicators nito, pwede bang baguhin? Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, in progress pa naman ito, sabi na, although na-approve na ng DPM, pwede, siguro pwede, baka pwede pang mag-appeal. Kasi nga, yung, even yung targets natin, sabi namin baka pwede pa nating baguhin. Uh -oh. Depende nga yun, ma'am, sa budget na ibibigay nila. From what I gathered, uh, DPM is not uh, entirely uh, satisfied uh, sa ating sinabit. Uh, ibig sabihin, okay, aprobahan lang kasi may deadline. Pero, hindi pa yun talaga sila ganong kahapi sa ating sinabit. Uh, actually, recommendation din nila man nila yung ma'am yung karamihan sa ating sinabmit. Eh, so yung sinabmit natin, tinritik nila, nag-recommend sila, and then nag-agree nag tayo kung ano na yung, yung pwede nating i-adapt na indicators. Pero mostly, recommended din nila yun. At in din nila yung mga recommendations natin ng indicators. So nag-meet tayo uh, with DPM. Uh, Napaka-yaman ng mga questions the regions, ituloy natin. So, kagayon ni Oro ulit, uh, sabi niya, bukod doon sa uh, making indicators uh, within our control, ang pagtuloy niya, ang control variable ay dapat number of lectures, Ay, number of fora, number of symposia. Um, whether LC. invited or office organized. At dito si Sir Benny, kasi siya yung nag develop nung mostly indicators pero pwede natin siyang invite. Uh, mamaya na lang sa SPMS, ano? <laughs> Para nakita na niya ito. Uh, so, ipa-flashback ipa ulit natin, Ray, yan, sa kay Benny, mamayang hapon, yung mga questions niya. Tapos yung performance indicator, should be, it be interpreted as output or outcome? So, mamaya na rin kay Benny ito. So, doon sa kabilang uh, kwan, uh, slide, uh, parehas lang. Oh. So, mas, uh, mas pinalaki lang. 
Oke. Okay. Uh, so ako naman, uh, I'll suggest na doon sa ating generic services na ipinakita kanina, kulang na kulang. Ano. Limbawa, uh, establish a continuing program of research, education, information to enhance respect for the primacy of human rights. Generic services, policy, program development, or capacity building services. So, Human Rights Education Services, Generic Service, Research uh, Services sa Limbawa, Policy, Human Rights Education Policy Services. Diba? Uh, policy Program Capacity Building. Ano pa dito? Generic Services. Saan papasok dito yung, yung materials sa Generic Services? Materials Development and Production as the generic service. So, pwede itong i-farther uh, plus out o mas improve pa para ma-capture naman yung yung SS lang ginagawa na for promotion. A simplistic statement that's like this or phrase uh, does not give justice to how the office actually operate. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. I'm doing it. Uh, yes, I understand, man. Hindi yan complete picture of your office. Mayor yung ginawa nila, Sir Benny, yung discussion nila, in craft yung sa organizational structure, mas kompleto po yun, ma'am. So, yun yung inisa-isa nila lahat ng mandates, ng functions, ng bawat opisina. Mas kompleto yung generic services nilang listahan. Okay, so this has to be updated. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, on that note. Okay. So, tinan natin yung Region 9. Na sabi niya, increase of target will be based on average of three years actual performance. The set to human rights IEC materials developed and disseminated. No indicator on means of dissemination. Yon. On means of dissemination. Do you use radio? Do you use the me? Do you use the internet? Uh, use the. Oh, wala do indicator. So, Hindi na spell out dun ma'am. Pwede bang ipaliwanag uh, do sa pag-identify ng mga set set na indicators? Uh, yung means of uh, dissemination on, under, yes ma'am, yung TV, radio, print, and internet, hindi na nilang nilagay dun sa mismong indicator, hindi na inisipin. Pero, pagka yun dun sa operational definition, kasama po yan, kung yung means of di dissemination. Sa operational definition po makikita, sa, hindi po sa indicator. So, yung operational definition, ang gumawa niyan ay ang SDPO. Kasama dun sa yung TWG, no? Technical Working Group for the Officer Benny and other offices. Ibang FMO. So, tatlong support offices ang gumagawa ng mga uh, operations indicators. O baka ang dapat gumagawa ng operations indicators sa mga operations offices. Uh, para Kasama mas nakakapture nila kung ano talaga ang indicators nila. Kasama yun sa sinabmit namin sa inyo? Yung operational definition. So mas ma-elaborate ng support offices yung indicators para sa sarili nila. Support. Draft lang kami ma'am and then we will submit that for your comments on revision sa bawat offices concerned. Oo, for, uh, for purposes lang na ma-run namin yung pag-cascade nitong OPIF and SPMS. Okay. So, tingnan pa natin ibang questions. No indicator on existing interagency activities where our services are at times exhausted. Some indicators are not reflected on how the regional offices operates. For example, our membership in local RIACAT, Regional Interagency Committee Against Torture, PPOC, Local AIDS uh, Councils, and etc. 
yung DBM guidelines, ma'am, on performance indicators allows us only to mga to have at least three sets of indicators. Kung, kung lahat po yan, ay lalagyan natin ng indicators ay napakarami po yan. So itong indicators, yun yung sa tingin nila ay makakakontribute doon sa, sa societal, sa organizational outcomes, sa sector outcome and societal goal. Kasi madami kami ni raise na pwedeng indicators. Pero sabi nila, ilimit nyo lang. At yung una nga ma, hanggang dalawa lang. Eh. Two sets lang ina-allow nila. Hanggang sa nag, dahil nga uh, naging tatlo lang yung ating MFOs from six. So nag-appeal kami na pwedeng magdagdag ng indicators. So nag-allow sila na hanggang three. Three sets lang ng indicators. So, yun ang question. Uh, kung, kung wala yan, ibig sabihin ba, di na namin gagawin ang mga interagency activities, ang interagency uh, concerns. Uh, kasi yan ang sabi ng DBM. Uh, itong indicators, ma'am, ito lang yung ating commitment lang. Hindi naman ibig sabihin na dahil wala sa indicators, hindi mo nagagawin. Pero ito yung ating commitment sa DBM na kailangan natin ma-achieve. Kasi ito yung tingin nila na makaka-contribute tayo sa uh, trust ni Pinoy. Kung si kung interagency, lahat ng meetings ilalagay natin na indicator, eh, sobra namang dami ng indicators natin. Kaya ang guidelines nga lang nila, ma'am, is limit it to at least three, two to three indicators. Sa akin tingin, mayroong pros and cons yun. Kung yung limitado ang sinasabi ng DBM, meron ang leeway para ma-exceed mo yung iyong performance targets. Kasi itatagdag mo yung mga hindi nakasulat doon sa targets. Ire-report mo yes. na yun na na-accomplish mo. So more than what is expected. Ma'am, doon sa individual accomplishment, individual targets, di yun i-reflect nila doon, doon sa SPMS na yun, ma'am. Doon na ilalagay. Kasi mag-individual, mag-office target kayo, ma'am. Tapos may individual or unit or division target and then may individual target. Hindi naman strictly kung ano lang yung indicators, yun lang ang itatarget mo. Okay. So merong... Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Then uh, we have from the Cordillera Administrative Region. We suggest that we'll have a uniform assessment and evaluation form for IEC materials developed and the central office to share to the region if there is an existing one. So, ang ating uh, expert sa IEC materials is seated over there. Uh, ang ating HRRC. So, we'll, uh, we'll uh, develop uh, IEC materials assessment form and share to the regions. Uh, what's going to happen? What is developed will be pilot tested uh, if uh, it conveys uh, the message to the evaluator and if it generates the expected uh, answers uh, from, the, from the source of information or uh, evaluation. Afterwards, it's going to be finalized and shared to everyone, central and regional office. So, isa yun sa mga gagawin ni Sheila na uh, action sa kanyang uh, action plan. Ganun din naman, yung uh, education division uh, will develop the, the evaluation tool para sa mga audience na from the academe. At uh, ang IHL division will develop the evaluation tool para sa audience from the pillars of justice. Coming from the pillars of justice. Ang ating uh, Black National Secretariat will also develop the evaluation tool for uh, our uh, participants who are from the grassroots and LGUs. Then later on, lahat ng mga tools nito will be compared at baka pwedeng isahin na lang. Pero ang bawat sinayit natin, target audiences, meron kanya-kanyang peculiarities, kaya doon muna tayo magsisimula according to this, uh, with due consideration to all the peculiarities of target uh, audiences 
isla sa evaluators. At yung ating advocacy division, ganun din, uh, magde-develop sila ng evaluation tool para doon sa mga uh, celebratory fora uh, and events para mag-gather ang feedback ng mga participants. Uh, si Let's hear from Bebot. Uh, kung natuloy sana ma'am kasi yung ating two days doon sa siyudad, yun ang sana part doon sa activity, yung magde-develop ng mga assessment at monitoring forms, yun sana ang isa doon sa pinaka-main output natin. Eh kaso nga ma'am, hindi naman na-approve. So, na na napunta tayo sa feedbacking. Okay, so it's not water under the bridge. Uh, it's water over the bridge. <laughs> Doon sa ating bridge over troubled water. Okay, so, uh, pero ang ibig sabihin niya na eh, matutuloy ba yan o hindi? Pwede namang dito na lang natin gawin. Hindi naman kailangan i-limit yun pag-develop ng mga tools na yan. It's part of our regular undertaking. Okay, so let's look at the other questions. Ang sabi ng kagayang de ero, ah, kagayang de ero, kagayang de oro, pero yan ay ginagawa ng regional offices. Yan, mga, yan nga ang effect kung nakatali tayo sa MFO indicator kasi may target na. Tingin namin, dapat pag-isipin pa kung paano ang mekanismo nito. So, pagtulong-tulungan natin, pag-isipan yan, tapos let's share whatever uh, comes up with our minds para ma maayos natin itong ini-experiment ng DBM sa atin. Okay, other questions from the body? Darwin, may question ka? Pwede lang ate Greta. Uh, baka, ano, when it comes to targets, baka pwede na ang basis ng targets, yung trending ng actual accomplishments rather than yung... Kasi ang dali maggumawa ng targets eh. I mean, uh, in, in, in reality, yung, yung actual performance mo is always below the target. Regard, pwedeng budgetary constraint, force mayor, hindi ba pwedeng uh, yung, uh, yung trending na ng actual accomplishments ang basis? Some of our targets are based from the trends for the past three years. Actual accomplishments for the past three years. Yung iba naman, actual accomplishment nung 2012 kasi yung three years na trend, mababa. Doon dapat daw ang baseline natin is the 2011 na accomplishment. Pag mababa sa 2011, kailangan natin siyempre itaas yung, yung target natin. So, tinignan na din namin yung 2012 lang kung hindi pwede yung trends for the three years. Siguro kailangan magkaroon kayo ng relational study ng uh, trend uh, accomplishment uh, ng uh, trends na accomplishment vis-a-vis -vis fund releases sa region. So, magkano yung pondo o budget na binibigay at ano naman na ako, please. Magkano yung pondo halimbawa sa bawat MFO uh, na na-identify at ano yung actual accomplishment base doon sa pondo para mas maging uh, uh, maayos yung presentation sa DBM. Mas maintindihan ng DBM, ito accomplishment in the past kasi ito lang naman yung pondo na na i-earmark sa kanila at ito lang ay kinakaya na ma-accomplish nila. Ngayon, kung mihingi sila ng, uh, ng pondo para meron pa silang gusto ng isagawa, hindi natutugunan yung request for funding kasi wala nang i-release. Kailangan ma-present ang maayos sa DBM yun para may maunawaan nila yung tungkol sa accomplishments, sa uh, performance ng agency. Yung iba naman ma'am, kasi bago yung indicator so wala tayong baseline data. So, nagpa- set tayo ng target ng per region. So, yun yung kinount namin. Dahil nga wala tayong baseline data. Uh -oh. Just like itong number of IEC materials nyo, hindi tayo pwedeng mag-trends kasi may mga years na wala. So, yung basis namin, yung 2012 nyo na actual na five IEC materials. Uh, okay. 
Uh, when it comes to number of participants sa limawa ng trending, I suggest na uh, gumawa lang ng chart. Uh, ito yung nireport ng regions na accomplishments. Tapos, ito yung tinotal namin. So, for 2012, ito yung total at itong kinonsider namin trend at ginawang baseline. And for that matter, pagdating ng 2013 o 2014, ito yung ating pinoject na magiging accomplishments. Kailan lang makita yung pinaghugutan ng numero ng targets. Kung yan yung total ng regions, uh, makita yung region 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Ito yung total, tapos overall total ganito. Kaya ito yung uh, central office included. So, ito yung total. So, for 2013, 2014, ito na mga target. Ito kami ginawa, ma'am. Yung sinabit nga namin sa DBM, yung basis for our targets. So, may naka-define dito kung ano yung base sa three-year trends, saka yung actual accomplishment for 2012. Okay, time check. It's 12. Let's give uh, Ms. Greta Tarun a warm, big round of applause. Uh, para yung palakpak nyo ay isang indicator na gutong kayo. Uh, hina ng palakpak eh. Uh Oo. -oh. Ano? Nakamerienda ba lahat? Ha? Si Greta, hindi pa nagmerienda eh. So, 12, it's 5 uh, minutes before 12, it's 11.55 sa computer time. This is the Philippine Standard Time. We'll uh, declare a break and we'll come back at what time? One o'clock, please. One o'clock. Please uh, come with no need to be called. Okay, yung ating regions, uh, ganun din. Please enjoy your lunch uh, and uh, uh, please uh, please uh, stand by. Uh, please put your uh, computers on standby mode. Uh, we'll start uh, exactly at 1 o'clock. Marami salamat.